Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I wanted to go over what I had shown you yesterday, which was uh, factorization. After you uh, did your assignment for yesterday, I noticed that a lot of you were struggling um, with the concepts. So I wanted to do a couple more problems with you just to kind of hopefully shore up a couple of things maybe that you were confused about. So I'm gonna do two uh, problems to kind of recap what you should have been doing. And if you didn't use up your two chances on your assignment, maybe use this opportunity to go back and do it one more time to see if you can improve your grade if you haven't already um, tried it twice, okay? Let's try uh, this number first. Let me move my camera so you can see a little better. All right, let's try 45, okay? When we're factoring, we're asking ourselves, what two numbers can we multiply together to get to this number? You may have more than one combination, and I'm going to show you that as well. But let's let's start with this. What times what will give me 45? Okay. You may have said five times nine. Okay. Another combination that some of you may have realized was 15 times three. Okay. Those are two combinations that you could have used. Either is fine because you're still going to get to the same answer at the end, and I will show you that as well. All right. So now that I've identified two numbers that make this um, as an answer, I need to see, can I factor further? When I'm saying, what can I multiply to get to this number? I'm not trying to use a one. If the only option is using a one, then your number is done. It, it's prime now. So for example, one times five gives me five. Nothing else does. I do not want to use a one. So my number is done, one and done. So five is now prime. Looking at this next one, what two numbers can I multiply to get nine? If you said three times three, I agree with you. Three times three gives me nine. Now I ask myself, what times what will give me three? The only thing is a one. I don't want to use a one. So that means three is prime. So this is finished. These numbers that are circle are now my prime numbers. I need to put them in order using multiplication symbols to separate them. So three times three times five. These are the factors of 45. Now, just to show you that even if you use a different set of numbers, you still should get the same answer. So just from working this one, I know that three is prime, so I can't go any further with that. What times what will give you 15? If you said five times three, you are correct. I know that three is prime. And just because I had already did this one, I know that five is prime. Okay, remember, if the only number you can use is one, then you're done. Again, I put these numbers in order separated by multiplication symbols. Three times three times five. So as you can see, I got the same answer, even though I used a different combination of numbers. The factors should still be the same, okay? Let's do one more. Let's do 112, okay? The good thing about an even number is that even if you can't think of a, two numbers that you multiplied to get it, if it's even, you know that two is involved. Anything that's even has a two in it, okay? So let's start with that. Two times something gives me 112. And you may have thought of another combination and that's fine. Again, we should still get the same answer. I don't know what I multiplied two by to get to 112, but I can figure it out by dividing. I can divide by two to get the other number. Two will not go into one. How many times will two go into 11 or close to 11? If you said five, you're correct. Two times five is 10. If I subtract that, I have one left over. Bring down my two. What times two will give me 12? If you said six, you are correct. So two times 56 gives me 112, okay? I'm gonna start over here. What times two, excuse me, what two numbers can I multiply to get a two? I can't, the only other number is a one. So I'm not using a one, so I'm done. Come over here. What times what will give me 56? 
again, it's even. So I know I can use two times something, but some of you may have realized that I can use eight times seven. Um, another one would be, I think four. Yeah, four times 14. So let's use eight times seven, let's use that. Eight times seven will give me 56, okay? All right, now I'm gonna look at the eight. What times what will give me eight? Two times four will give me eight. I know two is prime, so I'm gonna circle that. What times what will give me four? Two times two. I know two is prime, so I'm gonna circle those. I'm done with the eight. It has been factored as far as it can go. Now I'm gonna look over here at the seven. What times what will give me seven? If you said one, you're correct. Remember one, I'm done. So I'm gonna circle that. So these are the factors of 112, but I'm not done, I have to write it out. Separating them by multiplication symbols. Remember, go in order. So when I mean order, I mean least to greatest. So two times two times two times two times, two times seven. Let's make sure, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then a seven. So these are the factors of 112, okay? I just wanted to kind of clarify what you should have done in yesterday's assignment. Remember, if you didn't use your second chance, go back and re redo it. Hopefully you get a better grade. Today's assignment, you're gonna be telling me if numbers are prime or composite. If a number is prime, that means you can't do this. You won't be able to do this. If a number is a composite number, then you're able to do this, what we just did. So 112 will be considered a composite number because I'm able to factor it. A prime number means I'm not able to factor it because the only number I can use is a one, okay? So good luck on today's assignment and make sure you go back and redo Monday's assignment if you are able to. All right, guys, see you tomorrow.